Stan Gibalisco here, amateur radio operator W1GV, Whiskey One, Golf Victor at your service. I'd like to describe for you a little antenna tuner that I built some years ago that really works. It'll tune practically anything. In fact, it'll tune nothing, which I found out by tuning it into nothing. How does it work? Well, basically, the original concept came about <clears throat> because I wanted to figure out a way to get a good match to an end-fed half-wave antenna. Like, for example, on 80 meters, a half-wave antenna might be 130 feet long or thereabouts, twice that long on 160 meters. I wanted to be able to end-feed a half-wave antenna. Now, one of the common ways of doing that, of course, is the so-called ZEP antenna, Zeppelin or ZEP feed. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to bring the wire right down into the shack. Well, I had a good earth ground at the shack, but not a real good radio frequency ground. A good radio frequency ground would mean that I would have to bury a whole bunch of radials in the ground and I didn't want to go to that kind of trouble. Moreover, the soil wasn't all that good in my location and it was hard to bury anything. It was rocky and sandy. It was in the desert and it was rather difficult to do any of that stuff. So I had a fair earth ground fairly good, rather poor radio frequency ground, but I wanted to be able to match this antenna and get a pretty good efficiency out of the whole thing. Well, a half-wave end-fed antenna, a wire antenna, up in the clear will exhibit a very high, purely resistive impedance at its feed point somewhere on the order of 1,000 to 2,000 ohms. That's a high radiation resistance and it will appear as a purely resistive impedance. But that's not going to do you very much good for a radio that wants 50 ohms of pure resistance. That's going to cause you to have a standing wave, wave ratio on the order of 20 or even 40 to 1. That's just not going to be a good deal. And uh, they do make antenna tuners that will handle SWRs up to maybe 10 to 1. But if you take a conventional antenna tuner and try to tune an end-fed half-wave antenna, uh, you're, if you have any experience with that, you, you'll know that that's pretty hard to do. You're not going to find very many commercially made antenna tuners that will do that, that will handle that kind of a standing wave ratio. However, this thing will. You need a roller inductor, the heaviest, meanest roller inductor you can get your hands on. Air core roller inductor and the heaviest, meanest, biggest value air variable capacitor that you can get your hands on and the place to do that place to find these components is at a flea market at a ham radio convention or you can browse through QST magazine or any of the various uh, magazines devoted to hobby electronics and hopefully find some of these things they're both kind of hard to get a good transmitting air variable is is a pretty heavy beast the same thing with a roller inductor. Then you need to figure out whether you're going to be able to tune that thing to resonance at the frequency that you want. You can use this formula here. The frequency in Hertz equals 1 divided by 2 pi, that's about 6.28, times the square root of the inductance in Henry's times the capacitance in farads. The reason that you want to use those base units for frequency, inductance, and capacitance is so that you don't mess yourself up and get uh, orders of magnitude off when you calculate your resonant frequency. You can always convert, first convert your 
inductor and your capacitor values, your maximum inductance and your maximum capacitance to Henry's and Farad's, take the square root, multiply by 2 pi, and you want this resonant frequency to be considerably below the frequency that you intend to use so that when you tune this air variable roughly to the middle of its range you will get resonance at the frequency you want. In fact you can take the maximum capacitance of this capacitor divide it by 2 to get roughly what the middle of the range will be and then use this formula and you if for example on 160 meters you would want uh, 1.8 megahertz, which is 1,800,000 hertz. And you can take it from there. You can do your calculations. You know power of 10 notation and all of that stuff. All right. Once you figure that out, and I did, I figured it out. And I, I actually, like I said, I modified a, um, an existing antenna tuner to get these components and then just uh, I sort of hacked it you know I went in there and I disconnected the the various things I believe it was an MFJ roller to uh, inductor tuner that it was designed for a kilowatt and, there, and you want the highest uh, power rating you can get your hands on because when you develop this circuit and tune it into a half wave antenna like this you're going to get very high voltage across that capacitor if you run any significant amount of power. I'm a QRP freak, you know, 10 watts or less, and so I don't have to worry so much about that. But if you intend to run a couple of hundred watts, you're going to get arcing in this uh, capacitor if you don't have a really big one. And if you want to try to run a thousand or more watts, maximum legal limit, 1500 watts CW, you're you're going to need to find a pretty doggone heavy capacitor and a pretty darn heavy inductor, too. But they exist. You can go ahead and build this circuit. Here's the configuration. What you get here is your roughly 1,000 or 2,000 ohms of purely resistive impedance up here and zero here when the tap is all the way down at the bottom like that. Pardon me, when when you... Yes, that's what you're going to get when you have the entire coil like this or you're shorting it out. So what you're doing basically is creating a a beast called a tank circuit, parallel resonant circuit, and you can adjust this tap to get anything between about 1,000 or 2,000 ohms and zero. Well, obviously, you're going to want to adjust this thing until you get 50 ohms for most radios. Then you'll get a one-to-one -one SWR on this little length of coax going to your radio, and your radio will be happy, and your antenna will be very efficient, too. Uh, this, The key to this is that you need to adjust this capacitor in order to obtain resonance at the operating frequency that you want. Once you do that, you've got an impedance transformer that's continuously variable by adjusting this tap. So you manipulate it. You have two controls, the roller control for the inductor and the setting of the capacitor, and you tune it just like an ordinary antenna tuner. You would use two controls and tune until you get minimum standing wave ratio. And with a half-wave antenna, then you will be feeding that thing properly. You'll have a good match at your radio. You'll have an efficient antenna, and you won't need to have a whole bunch of buried radials all around your yard. You can probably do with just, uh, well, in the case of the desert where I lived, I did lay down a couple of quarter wavelength radials on the surface and hoping that the bunny rabbits that were abundant in that area wouldn't trip on them and that I wouldn't trip on them and that the, my landlord's dogs wouldn't trip on them uh, but uh, nobody ever tripped on them as best I know maybe the snakes got caught up in them good anyway I had a reasonable uh, earth ground a rather poor radio frequency ground but because this radiation resistance here is so high so much higher than the loss in the earth 
you get a good antenna efficiency even with a poor ground and that is now you won't get any good results with no ground at all but you do need some radio frequency ground but this circuit I found worked very well and in fact it would tune any length of wire and that sort of surprised me I was not expecting that but of course the best length to use is a half wavelength or any integer multiple thereof so you get a really high radiation resistance here you can you know tune a short whip with this and it will tune it but you won't get the efficiency that you will get with the half wave antenna so that is the beast and like I said I, I actually took the antenna completely off this thing and was able to tune it to resonance without any antenna at all connected so I was basically just heating up this in inductor and placing an extraordinary voltage across this capacitor and uh, as I well, I was not surprised to find it only took a uh, few tens of watts to get an arc across that capacitor that you got to watch out for especially if you'd like to run high power you would better get your your hands on some real heavy-duty stuff here but that is uh, the tuner that'll tune just about anything it's uh, if you go to a flea market you can probably get these components for a pretty reasonable price and then kludge it up and have yourself a good time on 160 or 80 meters so long.